Hi. Well, in the next few minutes, we're just going to explore this little area, extended chords. Well, before we talk about extended chords, we just need to be sure that we're happy about the basic chords that we're thinking about extending. So what I've written on the board here are the basic chords in the key of C major. Now how have I done this just to recap? We've got a scale of C major at the bottom here, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And to form our basic chords we put a third and a fifth above each of those bottom notes. So in other words, C's here. So what's the third note up from C? Well C's number one, D's number two, E is number three, F is number four, G is number five. So I'm taking one, three, five, C, E, G, and that gives me chord one. I do exactly the same here by going D, F, A, and then I go E, G, B, F, A, C, G, B, D, and so on, up all these chords. And when I get here, I'm actually back at chord one because I'm using C, E, G, I just happen to be in a different octave. So those are the basic chords that you can find in any key. And some people have been in touch with me about chords in the past and they said, well, why don't you have, for example, an F sharp in this chord here? Well, I don't do that because I'm in the key of C major and in C major, there are no sharps, no flats. So we just follow the key signature. So if you had a B flat in the key signature because you were in the key of F, every time you came across a B in one of these chords, it would be a B flat because you'd be in the key of F. But if you're in the key of C, no sharps, no flats. So don't use any in any of the chords. And possibly if you're a guitarist or a jazz musician, instead of these um, Roman numerals, you might know this is a chord of C, this is a D minor chord, E minor chord, an F chord, a G chord, an A minor chord, a B diminished chord, and obviously we're coming back to uh, a C chord because that's how they work out. And you'll notice a mixture of major and minor chords and one diminished chord, that's how it goes. Now, if I want to extend these chords, I could add to these basic chords. And you may have heard people talk about seventh chords, you may be very happy about that, or you may have been never quite sure what we mean by a seventh chord. Well, if I've got what we call a root, which is number one, a third and a fifth, all I need to do is add the seventh. So if I've got chord one, or a chord of C, then it's C, E, G, one, three, five and I add a seventh and you can hear that that seventh is a rather nice addition to the chord it makes it a bit richer doesn't it I can do that on every chord just by adding the seventh above the root of every single chord and that gives me an extension so the basic chords sound like this one two three four five six seven, back to one, put a seventh on the top, one seven, two seven, three seven, four seven, five seven, six seven, seven seven, back to one seven. So you can hear they're kind of really rich chords. If you go back to Baroque times, sort of between 1600 and 1750, they were already using the seventh chords and they really liked the seventh chord on five and they really liked the seventh chord on two and they sometimes used other seventh chords. As we went on into later music, we found these seventh chords being used more and more. Certainly by the 19th century, we were finding lots of seventh chords. And then in the 20th century, they've come into their own, particularly in certain styles, jazz being one of them. So those would give us seventh chords. Now you could extend it even further and say, well, let's have a ninth chord. So um, if I add this, can you see how this is now giving me a ninth chord? So life gets yet more exciting still. So now I've got these ninth chords. So here's the chord one with a seventh and a ninth. So there's a one nine chord, two nine, three nine, four nine, five nine, six nine, seven nine, and back to one nine again. And I could go further with this. So I could say, well, 
What about having an 11th? You know, why not? Let's go for it. So there's the 11th now piling on top of these things. So the chords are looking a bit kind of congested now. By the time you get to 11th chords, you don't necessarily have to have every single note of the chord. You can be a bit selective. But here is 111, 211, 311, 411, 511, 611, 711, back to 111. So they're quite interesting chords, aren't they? You can go on to do 13ths as well. How about this? So let's go a step further. So we've got, I don't know how many notes on a chord now, haven't we? Which is probably starting to freak a few people out. But there we are, that will take us up to 11th. As I say, by the time, uh, stop, sorry, to uh, 13th. By the time you get to 13th, you don't need all of those notes because it's a bit of a pile up of notes. You know, if you take 513, for example, there's lots of notes there, aren't there? So um, that becomes a little bit congested if I bring it down an octave. So you could have a root, you could have a third, you could have a seventh, and you could have an eleventh. So there is a 513 that's just got the root, the third, the seventh, and the eleventh, and that's enough to qualify it as a 513. Nice chord, isn't it? So if you hear that chord maybe progressing on to a chord one, it's richer as a 513 than it is just as a five. Could be a 5-7, but a 5-13. So there we are, lots more to say about that, but there's an introduction to extended chords. Enjoy.